Hello YouTube, I'm DarkySemi101 and we're back. We're finally out of housing limbo for God's sake. So, someone break out the champagne I guess. <laughs> we got ourselves a brand new location, I got myself a brand new haircut, brand new glasses. Still same shitty spot camera, so good to know nothing important has changed. So yeah, I'm ready to get back into the swing of things proper, but first things first. We have one more top 10 list to do because do you honestly think I forgot what today was? Today is the premiere of Digimon Tri Part 3 Confession. And as usual, I'm gonna throw in the Digimon Top 10 video. My previous two videos have covered my favourite and least favourite moments from the entire Digimon franchise, but that's got absolutely nothing to do with what we've got here today. Nope, today we'll be discussing bad things done by bad people. The uh, monsters or I don't know, it's villains. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be having a gander around my personal 10 picks for the best Digimon villains. Or my favourite, per se, because some of these guys are right proper assholes that I would never genuinely like. But these are the villains I think are the most intimidating, the most threatening. And yeah, there are some villains I like personally because of design features, that sort of thing. But, like I said, this is just going to be my pick for the best villain. I know you're all clamouring to know, so how will I be ranking today's top 10 lists, I hear you ask? Oh, you, you didn't ask? Well, fuck you then. Today's top 10 list is going to be ranked by the villains I personally liked most against the villains that I thought were just the most colossal pieces of shit I've ever seen on the screen. You know, the type of villain you want to strangle your own bare hands because you just can't stand them, the ones that don't get any redemption, those kind of villains, the one that make your blood boil because they're just just a little too close to the knuckle. Just a heads up, motivation or reason for villainy are not really factored into this list. I mean, if you have a cool motivation or origin story as a villain, it's going to affect their ranking somewhere, but it's not necessary. So if there's a villain who was manipulated by someone else or a good guy that was manipulated into being a villain, they are eligible for this list. And be wary of some spoilers for this list because we're going to be covering some final villains and some more intense villains so we're going to be covering the details of their crime so be wary of spoilers for Digimon Adventure, Digimon 02, Digimon Tamers, Frontier and Data Squad because like I said Cross Wars can go fuck off and die. So with that in mind guys let's begin. These are my top 10 best Digimon villains. Number 10, starting off with the controversy a little early, we have Myotismon from Digimon Adventure. I honestly can't tell how much of an unpopular opinion this is going to be. Myotismon tends to crop up on this kind of list a lot, and it's not without good reason. Myotismon is a tactical mastermind, a cold, unforgiving monster, and arguably the first proper villain the Digidestined fight. A constant and omnipresent threat during the second major arc of Digimon Adventure, trying to completely ruin, break down, and prevent the Digidestin from discovering themselves by preventing their crests and traits from being fulfilled. He's a monster, a gentleman, a vampire, and a true icon of the first series of Digimon. So why is he at number 10? They're not very common, but when I do see a list for the top 10 Digimon villains, my Swan is always on there somewhere, and it's not without good reason, he's an intimidating villain, he's one of the first villains a Digimon fan thinks of when they say, hey, name a Digimon villain, my is the first person to come up. So with all that said, why is he number 10 rather than number 1? Well, to be 100% honest, while he might have been a malevolent and mysterious figure when he was first introduced, he never really felt that interesting to me. He's a vampire, yes, but really that's all he had going for him. At least Etamon was creative in his own goofy, unflattering way. We'd already seen a villain whose only gimmick was that they were an iconic monster in Devimon, and he was a fucking devil, so a Digimon who was just a vampire wasn't really that impressive by comparison. From the first episode where we finally got him in a fight against the Digidestined, he was a disappointment because Garudamon managed to stop him in his tracks for God's sake. On top of that, the threat Myotismon poses is more with his following than him himself. 
He has an entire army, yes, but that's the major threat, not him. All the threat he has is his followers, and most of the time, they're more creatively designed than he is. Also, I know I keep harping on Digimon 02, but my Otismon's appearance in Digimon 02 sucked eggs. <laughs> Crimson Lightning! Number 9, Oikawa. A lot of you are now probably scratching your heads wondering what the fuck is he talking about this time. Oikawa was one of the main villains from Adventure 02. A very tragic villain this, well as tragic as Digimon 02 could get, but even so, Oikawa was a menacing bad guy. And sure, literally every other villain on this list has a greater power, they're Digimon for fuck's sake. They have stronger abilities, they can crush things, they can do things Oikawa never can, but Oikawa is more menacing as a villain than none of these villains can be. He looks exactly like the type of person you shouldn't leave your kids around. No, scratch that. He is the type of person you shouldn't leave your kids around. Like I said, Oikawa was one of the major villains from the final arc of Digimon Zero 2, and boy howdy was he a devious son of a bitch. In fact, you could call him the true villain of the entire series, working for the shadows and only revealing himself as the clock ticks down to its final hours. His true evil can be debatable, however, because the dark spores that affect Ken in the anime is made from the body of Millennium Mon in the games, and the games also have Ryo in them, and Ryo is seen in the anime. It, it's really confusing and convoluted, and I don't want to get into it here. He certainly acts like he created and implanted Ken with his Dark Spore, however, so good enough for me in this list, I guess. Anyway, I'm just gonna leave that there because that is a whole other can of worms to open on. Never, actually, because that's confusing as all fuck, unless I tried to do that. It broke my brain. Through the series, Oikawa has manipulated, controlled, and been the mastermind behind the Digimon Empire, the Control Spires, and Digimon arriving on Earth. He's the man who created Aru Kenimon and Mummymon, indirectly made Black War Greymon, and implanted about a dozen children with copies of Ken's Dark Spore. So, I'm sure you're all curious as to what his motivation was for doing all this awful stuff, to doing all this experimentation on kids. What was the motivation, what was the drive that made Oikawa do all this shit? He wanted to go to the digital world. That's all he wanted. Oikawa's one wish was to travel to the digital world for himself. In his mind, it was where all his hopes and dreams could be fulfilled. Granted, he was ultimately being manipulated by the spirit of Myotismon, but honestly, all of Oikawa's actions are mostly conducted under his own volition for the series. And when you really look at it, the tragedy of Oikawa's character is way too real for something as silly as O2. A man with dreams and hopes have been dashed, whose best friend has been long dead, all he wants to do is reach that boyhood dream he had with that friend of going to that wonderful far off digital world. He was manipulated to taking every action in his power to achieve that dream and in the end, he redeems himself by giving his life, his soul, his very being to protect that world he always wanted to visit, but never truly managed to reach. Sometimes the best villains don't stay villains, you know? Sometimes the best villains, they're the ones that achieve some type of redemption before they die. My only dream, my lifelong goal is almost within my grasp thanks to these deluded children. Number 8, Datamon. Let's cut the shit, Etamon was never going to have made this list, just saying. It could be argued that Datamon was the true villain of the initial server arc in Digimon Adventure, operating very subtly in the background of the five episode long arc. Seriously, the Dark Network arc didn't last pissing time. But that's not to say that the true villain, Datamon, wasn't a good one. Not an enemy of the Digidestined, at least not directly, Datamon is a plotter, and rather justified as a villain. Kept alive to monitor and operate the Dark Network of Etamon, Datamon was left half alive with no memories of his life save those of the fight he had with his nemesis. Datamon's an interesting villain because his only interest in the Digidestined is as a means to an end. All he wants out of them is the destruction of Etamon, and he has a pretty inventive method of achieving this. By the time the Digidestined find Datamon in the server arc of Digimon Adventure, he is a Digimon that has been literally and figuratively broken for a very, very long time, so all he wants is for Etamon to die. 
hang any consequences. So he makes a robot clone out of Sora. Datamon's plan revolves around making a digital copy of Sora and giving it her Digivising Crest in order to use Beamon as a weapon against Etamon. Which leads to a lot of interesting questions about the nature of the relationship between human and Digimon partner. None of which get answered because Datamon ends up getting disintegrated before we get any decent answers about the whole thing. Seriously, I know Datamon was in like Digimon Adventure for two episodes max, but he's left a bigger impact on me and I think the entire series as a whole than Etamon ever could. And Etamon came back later on in the series, so that shows you how little that character mattered. I cannot permit a mere boy to spoil my plans for vengeance! Number 7, Dynasmon. Because sometimes, you just love a powerful bad guy. Not the best written, fleshed out, and certainly not the best motivated villain of the bunch, but what Dynasmon lacks in a lot of areas, he makes up for in raw power, a kick-ass voice, and one badass as fuck design. Dynasmon is the perfect example of a type of villain that put emphasis on how much stronger they are compared to your heroes. That's what makes him amazing in Digimon Frontier. It may be a selfish choice, but sometimes you've got to appreciate a villain who totally dominates the competition, who makes you truly fear for the survival of your favourite character, someone who can crush everyone in front of them without breaking a sweat, someone whose own allies fear when in the heat of battle. That is Dynasmon. A villain who seemed totally unstoppable, even with the combined efforts of all the Digidestined in Digimon Frontier. It's Dynasmon's raw power that puts him on this list. Nothing more, nothing less. Back off, you annoying little creature! Number 6. The D Reaper. This one is. It's kind of unsettling. The D Reaper, for most part, isn't a villain. It's a threat, it's a serious danger to our heroes for the last third of Digimon Tamers, but it's a threat in the same way Mount Vesuvius was a threat to the people of Pompeii. It's big, powerful, and can destroy the world, but it seems to lack any real intent or will of its own. That is, until, you know, the D-Reaper gets voice and then holy shit things get scary. The D-Reaper takes on the distorted and menacing incarnation of Jerry using her voice, her face, her form as a basis for the central focusing part of its own intelligence. And once you realise it has been using Jerry's form to take her place in the real world, you wonder when it was that Jerry got replaced by the D-Reaper. How long have our heroes been sat next to the monster that wants them all dead? And that's really what makes the D-Reaper a great villain here. It's a plot in a way Datamon never could be. It knows everything it has at its disposal to get an advantage and remains in a human world undiscovered for the most part as to observe, to gather information. And this thing hangs around with our heroes so it knows them inside and out, so it knows how to do the perfect psych warfare strategy. It's kind of unnerving. It takes on Jerry's form, every aspect of the D-Reaper uses her voice and keeps Jerry a prisoner in plain sight for all to see, taunting everyone daring them to get closer and rescue their friend. This intelligence, combined with its sheer potential size and threat, make the D-Reaper a badass villain. Plus, the way the D-Reaper uses Jerry's grief, her rage, her depression, and just tells her it's better to feel nothing than let those emotions overcome her, and then using that as a weapon against her friends is fucking fucked up. And Digimon exist only to destroy or be destroyed, an exercise of utility! Number 5, Mercury Mon. And now it's time for a really fucking smart bad guy. Looking back on it, all the villains in Frontier are manipulated or don't really have their motivations explained very well, so yeah, they're all kind of lackluster, but still, Mercury Mon is the spirit of the legendary warrior of steel given its own form to serve Shirubimon and in turn Lucimon. But with that in mind, out of all the legendary warriors under Shirubimon's control, Mercurymon is one of the best. A cold, calculating plotter, Mercurymon seems to think of this battle with the Digidestined as more like a game of chess than an actual fight, which is perfectly demonstrated when he traps them all inside his beast form and begins experimenting on each of them. It feels like Mercurymon is planning a dozen moves in advance and that even his own teammates don't realise they've been manipulated 
until they're dead. He even willingly sacrifices one of his evolutionary forms in order to gain the upper hand for the next battle. Alright, it doesn't work out in the end for him, but even so, it's the sheer level of strategy and cunning he displays every time he's on screen is astounding. It also doesn't help he had a cool design and a kick-ass voice. He's just played almost like a rogue knight, one who sacrificed his honour for the sense of victory. He could also be intimidating as all fuck. In his first on-screen fight, he manages to outsmart and outmaneuver Seraphimon, destroying him and taking his data. He took out a mega-level Digimon by himself. And then of course, there's his battle with Takuya. I already talked about this in my top 10 Digimon moments list, so suffice to say, in this fight, Mercurymon was taking no prisoners. Seriously. Badass, that's all I'm saying. Using this made him a badass. My, art thou jumping. One might accidentally get the notion that thou art afraid. Number 4. King Drazel. Or as I like to call it, the time Digimon went invasion of the Body Snatchers. King Drazel was one of the more complex villains of this list, and he's one of the reasons I wonder why Digimon Data Squad doesn't get a better rep. I always thought that King Drazel was an interesting villain, a perfectly justified and interesting villain, right up until the point where it was revealed he was just a fucking computer system. Still pissed off about that. King Drazel was also a great foil for Marcus. You know, because he was using his dad's body as a vessel. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, just like I said. For the most part, King Drazil is simply portrayed as a king looking to protect his people, protecting the digital world. Even after it was fucked over once before, he was willing to give humanity a second chance because Spencer Damon bet his life that humanity could change. And then, when it came time for the Earth and digital world to be put on a collision course, King Drazil decided we'd fucked up his world enough already. King Drazel is only shown to be a true villain when everyone in the conflict other than him wants to reach a diplomatic solution and he's just like, nah dog, fuck that shit, I'm gonna keep on fighting. Ultimately though, even after his reveal as being a computer, he's still shown to be an intellectual foil, questioning why human and digital relations should continue. He's definitely a villain in the series, no doubt, but it's hard to say if he's a bad guy, which I guess makes him such an interesting villain because you understand and identify with his motives, why he does what he does, and it gets uncomfortable when you identify with the bad guy you're supposed to hate. Mind you, he is still a colossal penis. You worthless humans. You've created chaos and violence throughout your history, never stopping to realize that you're the very cause of your own troubles. I don't need to live in a human's body to realize that. That's why you must go. Number three, Duskmon. Come on, I admit it, you know how much I love this guy. For those of you who don't know, Duskmon is voiced by Crispin, fuck you, I'm Alakai, Prince of Darkness Freeman, which is his full name. It's a very weird christening story here. So as such, his voice is a given to be fucking badass. Then of course, he looks kickass as well. I mean, he doesn't have any hands, so it might be a combat disadvantage, but then he does have swords coming out of his wrists, so it's not like he's got an issue with weapons at any rate. He's also one of the few villains, I think actually he might be the only villain in Digimon Frontier to get his own sort of character arc and development, so he's got that in his favour anyway. I mean, it seems to be a very simple obsession at first, inspired by this almost Batman vs Superman level of Deus Ex Machina, but it's slowly revealed that there's a lot more to this villain than meets the eye. It's a classic Digimon trope in effect here, and this one adds a lot of weight to the Continent of Darkness arc of Digimon Frontier. And then his beast form looks even more badass. I mean, come on. Velgamon looks like that kind of thing that keeps Slenderman as a pet. What is our connection? Why do I feel like I know you? And why did you come to this world? Give me your memories. Number two, Piedmon. Because clowns are scary, and this one will turn you into a fucking keychain. Piedmon has a few credentials that no other villain on this list really have. One of those is the Piedmon fucking one. I'm serious, by the time the Digidescent came to fight Piedmon and the other Dark Masters, he'd made the digital world his bitch. He also did rule the digital world. He shaped it into a fucking mountain and had his base of operations at the very top. He was an absolute badass from his introduction to his end. The hair's kind of ridiculous, yeah, but you gotta admit, that mask is fucking cool. Plus, unlike Myotismon, he fucking dominated a Digitester when he first showed up. 
He took two mega level Digimon at once and beat them off on his own. Phrasing. I'm not a sicko, I'm a collector, and these new items have such sentimental value to me. Ha! 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 Now, who wants to be next? Now, number one. One villain is. You know. A lot of the villains on this list have. You know, they're somewhat likeable, you know? They're. They might not have redeeming qualities, uh, but they might be more intimidating. One might be more powerful than the other. They might be pure evil. But they're villains we love to hate. They're villains we want to see be destroyed, but we also kind of like the way they worked, you know? Maybe? I don't know. It's just. And most of them were monsters or were manipulated, so it kind of makes sense that they'd act a certain way. I. Uh, I honestly don't think anyone on the writing team could have made this character without being a little bit unhinged themselves. Because this man, not monster, man, is perhaps the worst villain I have ever seen. Akihiro Kurata. This man is the worst piece of shit from the entire franchise. I mean, there are villains that do shitty things, but holy hell, no one has done as much shit as Akihiro Kurata did. I mean, wow. This man is like the Digimon equivalent of Voldemort, I'm not even kidding. He single-handedly launched a genocide of the digital world, twice, destroyed and murdered the biggest populated city of the digital world, spliced three kids with Digimon data to be his personal warriors, put a bomb on the neck of a chronically ill girl no older than 10, used the life energy of all the Digimon he killed to revive a maniac demon lord, pumped his brain into said demon lord, took control of it, went on a one-man war on Japan, and then before he could be brought to justice, he ripped open the barrier between human and digital worlds, sending both planets on a collision course with one another. Great. Fucking. Job. You know when I said that Oikawa was the kind of villain that had a little bit of redemption and so made him a kind of more better character or a better villain, you know? You know, some of the villains, uh, they have a little bit of redemption or they show a little bit of remorse or they have a moment of brief humanity where they repent or at least come to grasp with all the awful shit they've done. Kurata is the exact opposite of that. This man has no sense of remorse, never tries to redeem himself, and sinks further and further into denial the longer he stays alive. He never once seems to believe that what he's doing is wrong in any way, and to make him utterly, totally unforgivable and irredeemable, he has the brass nerve to ask, no, beg, beg like a simpering little bitch for mercy. He pleads for pity just before he's about to lose. After killing hundreds of Digimon, putting the human world at war with the digital, and nearly levelling Japan, he asks for pity. Fuck this man. Akihiro Karata, the absolute worst of the worst, and by extension, my number one pick for the best Digimon villain. You'll never stop me! My plans will move forward no matter what you do! Find my Zen. It's okay. He's not real. You don't have to go out and punch someone again. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the top 10 list of mine, and you have no idea how good it is to be back in front of a camera again. Oh my god. And it's so good to keep celebrating one of my favourite anime franchises of all time. However, before I sign off tonight, I have a favour to ask you guys. As next month is Halloween, it's October, the month of everything spooky, scary, 
I figured instead of reviewing some random horror game I picked up, like, wherever, I figured you guys could help me out and suggest your pick for one of the, you know, I'm looking for so bad they're good horror films next month, okay guys? I'm not gonna lie, the movies don't have to be great, because, let's be honest, there's not, not many great horror films left these days, so because this is sudden, I wanted to get something prepared early so you can see just what sort of thing I had in mind. So I went ahead and picked up my pick, Jason X. You know, <laughs> that Friday the 13th movie where they've just admitted they've got no ideas left and they sent him into fucking space. Yeah, that's my pick. So if you guys have a suggestion for a so bad it's good horror movie for Halloween next month, Please, I would love to hear it, because this shit don't stop getting funnier. Anyway, I've been Darkest Samuel 101. This has been another Darkest 101 Top 10, with the camera at last. I'm Darkest Samuel 101. Thanks for watching. It's good to be back, YouTube. Good night. Stay scared.